so if you use a piece of cloth of some sort, um, I've had this for, I don't know, 20 years probably, um, it works pretty good. So these are 0.15s of my Newtons. And one of the important things is to get the pin in pretty straight. So you want to pretty much, you know, 90 degree angles with the abdomen and you want it like pretty much, you know, straight. You don't want it like that or, you know, that's one of the problems that people have pinning left in general is like the pin is like just out of whack or it's like through the, it's the specimen so small, it's like through the wing or it's like through the head. Um, it's not through the thorax. The middle of the thorax, like straight through. That's the most important thing. If you mm -hmm. do that, it'll be much easier to spread. Um, that's why it's useful to have some sort of magnification, especially on small stuff if you can't see. Because if you just random it, you're like, eh, stick the pen in. It might look good, but it might be going through like the wing or the head or the abdomen or something like that. And if it's like through the wing, you're not gonna be able to spread the wing up. Um, so that's one of the most important things. So, and then getting it straight and bored is helpful as well. And I haven't spread a micro in like three years, so bear with me. Um, I have these little things I made to move things around. But so this is a tiny minute on a stick. It's very technologically advanced. This is an insect pen bent at a 90 degree angle on a stick. Um, so these little point things, I have with like, they're the same point points that you would use like point bark beetles. Um, just cut out of a, a um, they have like a little, like yeah, yeah, paper little paper, 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 yeah, point punch. And these are just um, note cards. So no, nothing special about the paper, just note card paper. Um, and basically using a combination of that and my little minute on a stick here. It, this one is around matter. It's so fresh, it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, next to a main vein. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the costal vein, the the veins along the costa are pretty stout, and so like right below that is a good area. Like you don't want to just stick it in the middle of the wing where there's no veins because it'll just rip. Um, and it's the same for especially for macros. Like if you have a really big moth, like a spat idiot or something like that. You would use a bigger pen than this, but you would put it, you know, right against the edge of that main vein on the costa, okay. and you move it up like that. You put it in the wing of this rivet. So the same thing applies here. Okay. But these guys are generally, if they're fresh, um, it doesn't matter a whole lot. It doesn't take much to move them. So, um, and you can move them with the regular these pins too. You don't need those fancy thing on a stick, but and these other pins kind of held the antenna in place, and then uh, usually put something to hold the abdomen in place as well, so it doesn't droop down. And it doesn't matter if the specimen is like perfectly straight on the board. You want to make sure that the specimen is straight with itself. So if the wings in this case are a little bit going this way, I don't really care a whole lot. They're pretty close. I just made the abdomen so it's perpendicular with the wings huh. that way.
Or something like that. So you can do these pretty quick. Um, let's see. 20, 30, 50 an hour if you're really, really fast. Sure. So Go God ahead. just made that look super easy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we uh, we don't have the same kind of exacting demands for our specimens because uh, we're using this essentially as reference <coughs> specimens. It's okay if they don't look quite as good. One thing if, if you work with moths is to know when you're going to destroy your specimen while you're trying to get a perfect mount, or when you should stop because it's going to be good enough for what you need. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes I can't get the wings in a way that's pleasing like this, but they're good enough. And you know, like finding that point and recognizing it's really critical to not losing the rare thing you have. But. Yeah, we'll do one that's a little bit more uh, of your style. <laughs> <laughs> it's not exactly my style, I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, what, sorry. Are, what do you do if the four wing does not bring Yeah, that can be a pain. Um, what I would recommend to do is that generally when that happens, you have something wrong. Mm -hmm. Like the pin isn't straight, or like a leg is in the way, or something like that. So generally when that happens, I would like pull the specimen off the board and like put it back on straight and just to make sure that everything is there. And if it still happens, um, I would move like the hind wings up first hmm. so that they're underneath the, f the forewing before I position the forewing. Okay. But generally, on a really fresh specimen, the frenulum and retinaculum are coupled. And so um, if something isn't moving like it should, there's usually something that's in the way. It could be like a leg is like stuck under there, um, or just like the pin is like through the side of the wing just a little bit. or something's usually wrong like that. Would you ever repin, or is that? Oh yeah, Okay. yeah, definitely. Okay. If I took the specimen off, I'm like, oh, the pin's like going like this. Mm -hmm. Just like put it back on here, um, get another pair of four, or forceps mm -hmm. and knock it off the pin and redo it. And okay, that's yeah. not, okay, good. Yep, <laughs> great. So like this, uh, so that's a male Kirsten or Rosaceana, by the way. Um, this is a Clepsis. We talked about like you know just using static or doing this quicker. So some people just do this. Um, and just blow the wings up and like you know like that's good enough. And that's actually a lot better than just leaving it with the wings folded up because I can actually see the wings. I can see the hind wings kind of and. If I wanted to relax that later and spread it, it would be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, way easier than if they were still just folded up like normal, like this guy. Um, you can do the same thing with this though. I mean, you can go through these pretty quick uh, with the points. So that's like, it could take like 10 seconds to do something like that. You can also just use um, pens. You don't need to use the points. So this looks like it's a Claris.
So you can just take <laughs> like a couple of minute, some, some people just spread like this because it's so much easier. You don't have to make the stupid little point things. Um, you do end up with holes in the wings though. So that's, that's good enough so that's good for most collections. Um, or like I said, just uh, Sort of depends on what you're, like Chris said, what you're doing, what your end goal is, and where you are. If uh, we're in like the tropical rainforest of some exotic country, like it's better to have all the specimens like that than like that, even if it takes, you know, because it's, I'd rather sample everything than leave a bunch of them there and bring home like really 10 nice ones. I'd rather have 100 that look like that. And as long as you get the wings spread up a little bit, it's good enough because you can always deal with it later. If you just leave them um, how they were, like these tortricids with the wings folded up, it's really hard to deal with later. So, and then coming off sticky traps, you know, that's a whole other story. <laughs> um, but stuff off sticky traps uh, desiccates, you know, the citrus oil is non-hydrous, so they are completely brittle by the time they come out of that, and so you have to relax them. Do you, you guys do this, I assume, um, just to get even get a pin in them? Because if you don't, they'll just fly apart. So um, if they're relaxed enough to get a pin in them, you can try doing this. If they don't spread or something, you can just leave them. Um, and that's what I usually do. Like I don't spread many things out of sticky traps, but or somebody the other, like that marijuana pest I was talking about yesterday, the Graphalita deliniana. They reared a bunch of them. Great, I'll go get them, I'll spread them up, nice museum specimens. They threw them in the freezer and left them for like a week and like, oh well, they're done for. So I just put pens in them and double mounted them and that was good enough. So, um, like I said, like Chris said, this is like more effort than most people are interested in, but um, if you're doing a lot of taxonomy, not as nice to have really good specimens in order to photograph and dissect and see the different characters that you can't maybe see and like something like that. So. Way more patient with that one than Yeah. Right. Right, right. <laughs> but yeah, there's a trade off either way. Um, these are all from the, like the field. These are probably from a couple years ago. I don't know. Those look like South Africa. Um, so if you have the, the ability to do this in the field, it's a good. I generally, on these trips, will spread eight to 10 hours a day, every day. So I'd get up at like seven in the morning, get the traps, sort the traps, spread until four in the afternoon, go put out the stuff for the next night, come back and spread some more, eat, brought to the sheet, collect off the sheet, you know, and then do the whole thing again the next day. So it gets really tiring after a while. Um, so uh, there's again a trade off to uh, having really fancy specimens versus this. So, no questions? I don't have any source for these. These are my only four favorite forceps. Um, I don't know where I got them from. You can't have them, can't have them anywhere. <laughs> um, I considered not even bringing them on this trip because I'm so worried that TSA will like take them. Um, so yeah, I heard somebody talking about forceps for my Newtons. I don't have a solution. I use these, but like I said, you can't buy those anywhere. What's so great about those? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> they grab my students really well. Okay. Mm. okay. They're just like flat and like 
I don't even know what they were used for. Like I said, I have no idea where I got them. I have no idea where they were used for. They're not entomological. Um, so I've tried to buy stuff from BioQuip to like replicate this, and I can't find anything even close. So, toenail research. Right. Probably, yeah, exactly. Podiatry. Right. Special instrument. 